grab all the weapons they could carry and rushed out into the night, racing stealthily through the rushes toward the ominous glow in the clouds. It took almost 40 minutes near sprinting to break free from the marsh, and then they ran low and careful across the open prairie. The rifle fire grew less frequent as they ran, but whenever they heard it, they heard it louder, and soon they'd come as close as they dared, the fiery reflection from the clouds above them washing the prairie in a dim light, almost like daybreak, the light the color of a fresh coal. They both knelt in the grass and scanned the prairie about, looking for a place to hide themselves as well as the likeliest spot to find the scattered troops. The girl spied a ditch running low through the grass off to the south, and near it a stand of scrub brush. They whispered in broken code and devised their plan, then the girl handed her keen spear to the woman and they separated. The woman slipped off toward the ditch where she lay prone with her chin in the dirt, hidden by the shadow of the tree, while the girl ran into the open prairie, loosening her skirts to fall about her legs as she scanned the, white, the flat horizon. They waited several long minutes, maybe a quarter of an hour. More reports, some close, some far off to the south near the beach. Then the girl spotted the brown silhouette of a man running frantic from the battle, his rifle loose and wild in his grip. She stood and looked toward the ditch, then rushed to intercept the man. She waved her arms and the man came up short and raised his rifle, but she called out to him, made sure her voice came high and sweet, and she, as she rushed toward him, her skirt flew wide. She lowered, he lowered the rifle and looked about him in the night. When she reached him, she was panting and she said, are you all right, is everything all right? Ma'am, you need to run out of here, there's a battle nearby and this is no place for a lady. His eyes frantic and his legs dancing, he was ready to bolt again, she could see it. I got a place to hide, she said, over here, over here. And she pressed against him so he didn't know how else to respond but to back away. And she managed to turn him and aim him toward the ditch. Run, she said, run to them trees, you'll be safe there. He dashed off toward the trees just as she saw another shadow out in the prairie racing their direction. She pushed him into the ditch and the woman caught him on the end of a bayonet, his eyes wide and wet with surprise. She pitched him over into the deepest part of the shadows and hunkered down as the girl raced into the, into the prairie to meet the second man. Ma'am, get off this field, there's Yankees about. I know, the girl said, and she flew into his arms. I know, thank God you're here, I just seen one run into them trees where my mama's hiding. Hurry, please, and help her. The woman set aside the musket and slipped up into the clump of brush and waited. The Confederate dashed into the ditch and without warning aimed and fired into the body on the ground before seeing that he too was a Confederate. He looked about and then back out onto the prairie where the girl was scanning the horizon again, but she was the last he saw, the woman standing from the brush behind him to slit his throat, and he fell into the ditch beside his compatriot.